computer science department and a computational science research center member and part of the computational science PhD program. It's gonna talk to us about game theory in applications to pricing in the networks. Thank you, Dr. Cito, for uh, invitation. Uh, it's my great honor and pleasure uh, to give this uh, presentation of my recent research work. And I'll share my slides. Uh, I hope you can see my slides. OK. Um, so the, the work I'm working on right now is uh, try to leverage economics in designing the network, uh, wireless network. Uh, so primarily I use game theory and uh, also leverage or, or see if uh, machine learning can uh, play some positive roles uh, in solving those problems. All right, and uh, the content for this talk is uh, first we'll see the brief introduction of the quality of experience for users, especially for multimedia users and uh, the concept we introduce uh, as a smart media pricing uh, to serve the wireless multimedia users and uh, how we establish the economic model in designing this wireless multimedia user services. And uh, we discussed two solutions. Part one solution is uh, uh, to use game theory and specifically we use the stackable game uh, to solve this problem, which is a dynamic game, which multi-stage dynamic game. And part two is to uh, see if machine learning can help uh, to solve the problem. If the problem is hard to solve and we use reinforcement learning or more specifically we use Q-learning uh, in our study. And uh, we discuss some uh, result and uh, we cast an overview of the future potentials. Uh, all right. So the problem, what's the problem um, of the community nowadays in wireless research? We are in the age of data explosion. And based on the very famous uh, white paper released by Cisco every year, we call Cisco Video Index, uh, Networking Index white paper, our video traffic uh, data is increasing like 26% per year. So which means this year we are handling 100, next year we are handling 126. So this is a significant. And are we ready or not? In the wireless network community, we are having a heck of a hard time to keep up with this uh, uh, very aggressive demand from the users at the application layer, right? Uh, so people really works uh, to promote new generations of wireless technologies. Uh, to cope with new, 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 new application like virtual reality. You have a headset, uh, wireless headset, pushing a lot of data and uh, augmented reality or mobile rea reality or mixed realities. On the other hand, the network has even stronger requirement in terms of delivering data quickly and reliably like the self-driving cars, IoT technologies promote those new applications, which has a lot of requirement for short latencies. As currently 2020, we are in the age of 5G, the fifth generation wireless technologies. Maybe your network, our my network still LTE. Uh, very soon, in a couple of years, we're gonna see 5G. Yeah. And 5G did a lot of things like use massive, around a uh, massive amount of antennas. They use uh, millimeter waves, uh, high frequencies, large bandwidths, uh, smaller uh, cells or smaller base stations, so on and so forth. And to reduce the da data delay from 30 to 40 milliseconds currently uh, from LTE all the way to one millisecond uh, as claimed. But that's not enough. That's not enough because every year we're gonna have a 26% traffic increase. And people already start looking at sixth generation, which is about to be released in 10 years, 2030. So on the other side for the Wi-Fi network, Wi-Fi wireless network access technologies, probably we're using AC, most of us. Uh, some of us might still use the 2.11 technologies, but most of us is AC. And very soon we're gonna uh, have AX, or maybe we already have some AX technology de devices 
and we are moving to BE uh, versions. And in the in future, we'll see new generations come up. Right? And either in the computer network side or the telecommunication network side, we see the same trend. Uh, we are moving to the higher frequencies, large bandwidths, smaller coverage of base stations, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And people are talking about how about from migrating from 60 gigahertz current millimeter wave to next several hundred terahertz of the visible light communication. So in future, Wi-Fi is no longer Wi-Fi, it's called a Li-Fi. And your LED light can carry light and can also carry the band. So on the other side, people are studying, very recently studying the, how to control the environment of wireless network because wireless environment is hard uh, to manipulate. But we can do something if we can redesign the wallpapers redesign the ceilings, redesign the floors with reprogrammable small antennas. Uh, this is called IRS. Uh, again, this IRS has nothing to do with your tax. It's called intelligent reflecting surfaces. So by controlling the reflecting uh, intensity and the reflecting phases of the lines uh, of the waves, yeah, we can somehow manipulate the environment. For example, if you don't want any echo, we can remove that. If you want more stronger echo, we can do that. All right, so these are the issues and people are really working hard in our wireless network community uh, to study. But my work is slightly different from different angle. Uh, how about leverage the user side, human side, or the selfishness of the users or devices? Uh, how about leveraging the economic series to redesign or design new wireless network algorithms, strategies, protocols? And our focus is uh, uh, purely on multimedia data because if you see carefully, see the percentage uh, of the data explosion, you see, hey, internet video will dominate 71% of total traffic. Uh, video IO, IP, v, v, VOD means video on demand. And uh, maybe some, uh, uh, some other multimedia applications in total will be 82% of the data. So, if the big data pose too much burden to the wireless network community, and if we can solve the major issue, which is multimedia, 82% of the big data. So we, we've, we almost solve the big data challenge, right? So my work is to try to solve, partially solve the big data over wireless network issue uh, to serve those multimedia users with better experience. All right. So the user's experience of the QOE, quality of experience, is, is a truly complex uh, matter. It, many factors can impact that. For example, like from the device perspective, if you have a very limited battery uh, energy right now, your, your QOE will be poor. Right? And the network protocols, you choose TCP, you choose the UDP. Uh, what are, yeah, what about congestion control mechanisms? Uh, you choose Wi-Fi, you choose LTE, you choose 5G, new radio. This, this technologies will impact the application layer QE yeah, and the coding format, right? Application level, you, you choose MPEG-4, H.264, you choose HEVC, H.265, or even future H.266, uh, or uh, whatever the coding formats. Uh, you, you apply a huge amount of compression or little compression. This place major roles, right? And also context, right? Uh, the context at a uh, uh, network level, right? Uh, indoors, outdoors, right? Uh, close to base station, far away from base station. All these factors impact the user's experience. So from here, we can see the problem is it's a complex problem to solve, all right? And uh, in literature, there are quite a few different articles and uh, report uh, have already partially solved this problem. A lot of them, most of them started from the rate distortion theory. Uh, so rate distortion means, well, if you are provided with higher data rate, your distortion will be lower, right? This rate distortion, right? All right, or a higher data rate, higher quality. In general, it's like somehow like a log function relationship. And uh, some of other people see, hey, we started power distortion issues because the mobile devices are extremely limited in terms of the uh, and battery resources. So power, higher amount of energy, higher amount of power, uh, you have a higher uh, quality, a lower distortion. But yeah, my, my angle to this problem is how about 
a price, a distortion. You pay more price, uh, you have lower distortion, you, 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 you have a higher quality. So can we do something? So we are exploring the potentials uh, to have a pricing mechanism uh, to, 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 to redesign the wireless uh, resource allocation algorithms. All right, so the story can be summarized into a, a, a couple of players, let's see. Uh, one type of player is uh, the content provider like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Video, whoever provides this content. Maybe everyone of us like South Media, right? Um, content provider is a major player, provide the source of information. And the second major player is uh, the wireless carrier like AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, uh, who else, T-Mobile, who else? Those, those, those vendors or the infrastructure providers and the third major uh, player is the mobile users, like every one of us, the consumers of data. So the consumers data or mobile users are pay for to, to, to watch the movie, watch the video, watch the multimedia, and uh, to, to, to receive certain level of QOE, quality of experience. And uh, the content provider provide decent quality at the source but it also depends on how does the wireless carrier like ATT provide this connection, wireless connection to you. So this uh, uh, story is like, it's, it's still complex, right? Complex. But now we can see the relationship. And uh, if you dig into more details, you see the problems even more complicated uh, because data is different than other commodity. Uh, data is different. Maybe you have already have this experience recently, like, like smart grid, the power uh, companies, like energy companies, like SDGE or some other company, they provide different timing uh, price, time dependent pricing, right? You use power at four to 9 p.m. That's peak hours, you have a highest price uh, from 9 p.m. To, 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 to whatever, the midnight is uh, off peak, right? Or super off peak. Uh, from uh, 12 uh, a.m. to somehow 6 a.m., so on and so forth. They have different tiers, different levels of the price. It depends on the time, depends on when do you use electricity, all right? And now internet is a utility, right? Data is a utility. So why not consider data as a commodity? So you use different time. At different time, you use different data, a different amount of internet resources, bandwidth. You could be charged differently possible in future, right? but that's not enough. If you look at the data, this beat and that beat might also be different. If you watch a movie, for example, if the movie is compressed by either MPEG or HEVC, whatever, and you're gonna see typically you see iframes, which is independent coded. So iframe does not depend on any other frames to decode. It's just a P frames rely on the previous iframe or previous frames as a reference. So, which means if the previous P, uh, iframe is lost, the P frame itself, even if it's, it's delivered successfully without error, is useless because the decoding depends on the previous frames. And B frames are even worse. B frame depends on both previous and second, uh, the, 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 the next uh, reference frames. So, as long as either of them is lost, the B frame is useless in decoding. So, you see the data dependency when we deliver data, which means the data, if we charge a price, they, they will be different. Uh, the price will be different for this bit or that bit, it might be different. So that's the, the whole concept uh, we provide the, meet, uh, uh, the pricing. So the service model is, uh, can we uh, determine, right? The price for our multimedia data okay? and uh, the user uh, from base station side or from ser service side, and uh, the user side, uh, mobile user side might de de determine or certain logic might determine, well, how much uh, data I would like to purchase uh, in order to, to maximize my, my utility or my, my, my user's experience. Right? So that's a problem. Uh, we can see price can play uh, in this story. Right? So clearly from here, we can see naturally, it looks like it's a game. It's a game between the, the two players. One is the base station side. Uh, we call content provider, wireless carrier alliance, right? So they are server side. And the other is client side. It looks like it's a game. And if it's a game, right, we can, we can solve that. Yeah. 
All right. So the part one of this uh, uh, study is uh, well, we exploring a game theory as a solution, a game theoretic solution uh, to solve this uh, economic game problem. And uh, the, the, the beauty of using uh, game theory is uh, it's distributed. It's not a centralized solution. It's, you have your solution, you, you, you make your decision locally. I make my decision locally and we, are, we have an equally, equilibrium. Right? This is a stable solution. We don't want to deviate, deviate from. And in this study, we use a Stackerberg, which is a multi-stage uh, game model. All right. So in this, uh, uh, which is also dynamic game, uh, which means it's no one-time deal. It's not one-time game, right? So one player will go first and to make a cho choice, and the uh, the other player, as a follower, will make a choice correspondingly, and they may repeat uh, uh, until a certain stage. Right. So this is a continuous game. All right. So before we run into the details of this uh, uh, game solution, let's use an example. Uh, use an example uh, to to explain our philosophy. Let's see. This case, there are two firms or two companies. Uh, firm one is a new company, new startup, right? Has a new technology, and firm one is considering to enter the market, but currently the market is dominated by firm two. Firm two is old company has very mature uh, technologies, is already a uh, dominant market, big players, monopoly in the market. But firm one has a new technology would like to come in uh, to compete. All right, so firm one has two options at this moment as a game, as a two choices. Either firm one uh, stay up, being afraid of this competition uh, to stay up. Or uh, if firm one stay out, firm two, of course, enjoy, continue enjoying this monopoly and continue uh, dominating the market. Nothing changed, nothing changed. Or in another case, right? If the firm one choose to come in, compete, compete for the market, firm two, they have two options, either accept it, concede and accept it, or fight back, uh, fight back. But if firm two accept, if the situation is typically, see, firm one will uh, get a larger market share because of new technology, and uh, firm two gonna shrink. The the market gonna shrink, but still, firm two still will have some market share. If firm two choose to fight against firm one to defend the territory, then there's a price war. So both gonna hurt. Excuse both me. Gonna get negative. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by accept in the firm two? Oh, firm two accept means well, if firm one come in, the firm two uh, concede and accept the situation. See, they share the market. And if they share the market, firm one will have more because firm one has a new technology, has the advantage to, uh, to play okay. in the market. Thanks. All right. Okay. So let's see this. Uh, this toy example, toy example. So we can we can model the story. See, firm one uh, stay out. Firm one, as firm one is blue. Firm two is uh, red. Let's see, uh, firm one stay out. Firm one get zero zero on the left, is, which is a utility or outcome or payoff, whatever we call it, for firm one or outcome for firm one. Uh, two is the outcome for firm two. At this moment, right? That's uh, still the same story. If firm one stay out, nothing gonna change. But if firm one step in, uh, start the competition, and the firm two has two options, either accept the situation, so share the market with firm two, and somehow due to uh, uh, the resource increase or, or whatever, the firm two get two and firm one, uh, so firm one get two, firm two get one, so so somehow they share, and firm one get a higher portion of share, right? And, or firm two can choose to fight against the firm one. So they both lose, but firm one gonna lose even worse because, because the firm one is new. Firm two has already been there for many years. Firm two lose less, but still both gonna lose. Let's just take this for granted for the numbers. Uh, we, we don't want to argue the numbers. Let's take this numbers in as an input. So how to solve this problem? Put ourselves in the shoes of firm two and firm one. What shall we do? Uh, that's a perfect example of the economic game. So in order to solve this problem, well, naturally people think, hey, we'll con consider the static game, which is simple. 
And each of them have a each each player has a has two options, right? So we have two by two combinations. That's a table, and we can find what well, we can use the best response. Uh, what is my best response if you choose one option? So how about this? Assume firm two choose accept already. So firm two is willing willing to share the market. Assume this is the case for firm one. Should I step in or should I step out? Step out, I get zero. Step in, I get two. Two is better than zero. So I underscore mark the better or the best response. In is my best response if firm to accept. If firm to fight against, fight against me as firm one, I would choose to step out because oh, staying out, I get zero. I step, step in, I get negative three, I lose. So I can't afford that, I'll, I'll, I'll stay, step out. So that's my best response if firm two fight. All right. Similarly, for firm two, assume firm one stayed up. Nothing changed. It doesn't matter. Either accept the fight, that's nothing gonna happen, right? I'm gonna get two anyway. So it's an easy case. But if firm one step in for firm two, I have two options: fight, I lose one, accept, I get one. Well. For this case, just compare these two cases, I will accept the one is better than negative one. So I underscored each of the best response. Now I'm looking for the mutual best response, which means in this table, both are the best, both strategies are underscored or marked, right? Well, I have two. Both of them are much equilibrium. Now, both of them are stable state, stable state. Either state, firm one stayed out and firm two fight, right? uh, or firm one come in and firm two accept. So we can interpret this as a, well, firm, if firm one step in, firm two will accept. If firm two threat to fight, firm one will be intimidated to stay, stay out. But this is a solution for static game. Is this true? Is this, this is real? Consider this game as a dynamic game. There is a sequence order because firm two will play later, firm one will play uh, first, all right? So consider we have two national equilibrium already. One is uh, to stay out from one and firm two intimidate uh, a threat to fight. Or the other is a firm two accept and firm one step in. But let's see the case, if this uh, out and fight is this truly a natural equilibrium or not? Or is equivalency if firm two's threat is credible or not? If it's credible, well, that's a natural equilibrium. If it's not credible, non-credible, well, which is a false natural equilibrium. So let's see, the solution will be backward induction. So we start from the last stage of the game, from the firm two's game. So we only consider firm two's game uh, as a sub game. So firm two will face accept, uh, get one, face a fight, uh, get a negative one. So firm two is so smart enough uh, and uh, selfish enough, right? For this case, firm two ration, is rational, firm two will choose uh, accept instead of fight uh, because fight can lose. Uh, all right. So from here, you can see if firm one step in, firm two will accept which means the fight is non-rational. So this is not, uh, not, not, a, not a credible threat. So for this case, we can see if we remove fight, branch of fight, we compare firm one as uh, the two options. Firm one, stay out, get zero, stay in, eventually firm two will accept. So firm two get, firm one get two. Two is better than zero. And for this game, firm one will step in and to force firm two to accept. Of course, the game will change if firm two is become irrational, right? Firm two burn a bridge uh, to threat, to fall, to fight, and burn a bright bridge to, to, to accept, right? It's not, accept is not an option. So the game will be changed. But based on this game, right? Firm one will step in and firm two will accept. That is the only Nash equilibrium based on solution of backward induction, all right? During this toy example, we can see the solutions. We start from the last stage uh, from a sub game and to make it perfect. And then go backward one step 
and in a bigger subgame, uh, find the best response, so on and so forth, iteration by iteration, until we reach the first stage, which is a whole game, we find the best response. All right. And Boris' concept, we, uh, we came out with uh, this game as a as user side and the base station side. Let's see the user, user side. The user's quality experience can be is related to many factors and follow a, a model we call parametric model, which was uh, uh, introduced in uh, in literature a couple of year, uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, uh, using some parameters to model and the, uh, the 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 user's experience. And al also recently, people uh, propose in literature propose uh, we can consider psychologic factor or user's preference in this modeling. So in this uh, uh, QE, we see hey this user's experience is related to the multimedia quality contribution of each frame or each packet, which is QI. Uh, if this packet is received, how much uh, quality is improved or how much distortion is reduced in terms of mean square error, for example. Okay. We can quantify that. LI is the size of the, that packet, right? And the PK is a packet error rate, which is also estimatable or predictable or somehow measurable from the environment or network, right? If you know the bit error rate, you know the packet size, you can estimate the packet error rate, which is uh, the indicator of network quality. All right, so the, the meaning is for each packet in order to make contribution for QI, uh, the packet need, be, need to be delivered successfully and all the other packet, which are the ancestor of this packet, uh, which means this packet decodes Decoding depends on all the other packets in this set, pi j. Okay. So this packet needs to be delivered. All the ancestor packet also need to be delivered successfully. Yeah. That packet can make contribution to decoding. All right, so that's one factor. Uh, we may also consider other factors if you wish to, right? Like the, uh, the psychological factor or user's personal preference. Personal preference, for example, see, if you are a big fan of uh, uh, gymnastics, right? I'm a big fan of uh, uh, swimming. When we w watch Olympics, right, uh, which is coming up next year anyway. Uh, so, if you watch uh, gymnastics, you're gonna have a higher requirement or pick here about the quality. Maybe I am not, or for swimming, vice versa. So each user might have different uh, preference or, or or some kind of requirement factors. Uh, we call it personalized factors. Uh, we can consider that. But in general, it's most most like objective. Right? So we need to the, we need the network to deliver the data successfully right? in order to conceal the data. And the utility side, what well, user pay cost? Right? How about this? What well, we based on this uh, user per packet uh, had per packet cost uh, rule? Uh, you purchase a certain amount of packet and you pay a certain amount of cost. So let's assume yi is a cost of that packet, uh, yj is packet cost for packet j, and lj is the uh, size of the uh, the packet, right? You sigma them together, that's how much money you can pay. Yeah? We're not going to establish the connection between the, the hypothetical price with US dollar, which is out of the concern for this research, but we're gonna see some kind of a, uh, correlations between the, the, the absolute values. So why is a hypothetical re, uh, uh, price uh, for the packet j, all right? So the utility will be how much quality I receive subtract, subtracted by amount of uh, the, uh, the price I pay. Right? If I have a good quality and I pay very little, great. I have a higher utility. If I have a poor quality, I paid a lot, uh, I have a terrible uh, utility, right? So that's the uh, utility matter for the user side. Right? Of course, we have some limitations, minimum, maximum uh, size of the packet. That's constraint uh, for this problem. And for the utility side, uh, the, 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 the provider carrier, we call base station side, the content provider and wireless carrier. All right, for base station side or provider carrier side, the cost, uh, we, we spend some cost to prepare the data, right? For example, preparing for the compre compress the, the, the data, packetization of the data, push the data to the server, uh, so on and so forth, so that's cost of content provider. We also have cost of, from the uh, wireless carrier like ATT Verizon, so, so service carrier, they, they, they try to deliver data to you and they have to bear certain cost in terms of the delivery data. And also they need to provide a certain 
at least a certain reliability. So their error, packet error, is also indicator of the cost. The lower error, the higher the cost in general. All right. So from here, we can see well the income from the uh, uh, from user subtract by the content preparation cost and the the wireless care, uh, packet delivery cost. That's the roughly the uh, the indicator of the the utility uh, of the base station or UPC provider carrier. So from here we can model them. We can model them. Although we can refine the model, but that's that's concept. Uh, two utilities and both want to maximize their utilities, and that's a game. That's a game. So the game is well for the uh, to simplify the game, right? We have too many packet, a, a, a lot of packet. We can't just uh, find each individual packet price. We want to, that's the ideal case, but we can't, that's too complex. So why, why don't we just normalize, uh, normalize? So for, for a group of packet, for example, we have M packet. Well, let's group them. The L size, capital L means the total size. Uh, so we group this uh, M packet. And for the packet price, let's normalize, uh, normalize per unit of quality gain, uh, we see Y0 is a per bit per unit quality gain price uh, and multiplied by total quality. And then if you multiply by the total size of data, that's the total price. So Y0 is a normalized price per bit per unit quality gain of data. So by doing so, we can reduce the factor to a single packet parameter, which is Y0, a normalized packet, a price per bit and per quality gain. So the game is between the base station side and the user side. Base station is for a leader uh, to you name the price and follower. Well, I determine how much per data I, I get to purchase. Right? So that's that's, that's game. It's solvable, solvable. Right. So we can follow the, uh, the the toy example we had, and we start from uh, the last stage of the game. We call backward induction. Right. The last stage, the from a user side. The user side will determine what is my best response if the base station determine the price like this. Assume the base station already name a price P, and what is my best best response? So before we do that, we want to see hey what kind of a shape of this uh, utility function it is, right? So we get a uh, two uh, the the two uh, levels uh, of a uh, directive partial directive, right? Uh, user from user uh, utility to L, right? We have a, uh, we, see, we see, hey, this function is lucky enough, we have a negative and you have a square and you have a square, uh, which is always negative, uh, uh, non-positive non -positive or for sure. So which means this, the shape of this curve is a concave, concave curve. You have a maximum. You must have a maximum value, which we like. It. We like it. So doing so, we can have a first order derivative uh, and leave the first order derivative to zero, and that's the maximum value we are going to reach, right? And that's the exactly the relationship between y zero and l. So given uh, a y zero, if the base station gave me a y zero. This L follow this equation uh, for this equation will be my best response because I leave I, I forced my first order derivative to zero. Okay, but still that's not answer. That's not the final answer, right? That's just a, a relationship. Then go back to base station side. Base station side, my utility function is complex. Uh, it's complex. Uh, I want to find, I, I truly want to make the first order derivative uh, from UPC to Y0, uh, first order derivative to zero, force it to zero and find Y0. But uh, I had a hard time to prove this is a con uh, concave function. I don't know if it's, it's, it is or, or, or not, right? But fortunately, this is a differentiable. A differentiable function means it's co continuous function. And it also is a it's function within closed intervals. Why I have a minimum? Why zero I have a maximum? So price has minimum, maximum. So with these closed intervals and these have continuous function, you must have a maximum value. You must. Right? Either it's somewhere in the middle, it's a curve, or at the edge, either y min or y max. So you have that. So how can I solve this problem to find the maximum? Uh, find the maximum for UPC. 
I can use Newton's method, uh, Newton's method for them, right? <clears throat> Starting from initial x1, I get a tangent line, and tangent line don't cross zero, and then find another point tangent line again. Iteration by iteration, uh, by getting the tangent lines that cross tangent lines with zero, y, y equal to zero, then I can find the solution. What well, you have first order derivative, first force it to be zero, I find well, what is your x. Eventually I can approximate that. You can do that. Or in this case, a global search can solve, solve this issue, right? It's not very complex, right? Uh, the complexity is low, right? So let's just do a global search, right? To, to, to kick, take some samples, right? Let's assume the, the price has certain values, right? We, we make a discrete values of y and let's calculate each uh, UPC. And uh, we, we replace with uh, uh, the, the, the updated value every time. For, for one round, we can find the, uh, the, the maximum value. All right, so this uh, algorithm is uh, it's easy, easy. Complexity is not bad. So let's see the utility of the user side. Here we give some uh, different prices and uh, we have three curves. And uh, for data purchase, we have uh, uh, X axis and Y axis, we see the utility. From here, we can see clearly it's a concave curve, right? In the beginning, you increase the amount of data purchase. You have a higher utility, which is great, right? You, you would like to purchase more. But once you, beyond, you, you go beyond a point, uh, which is the maximum point, which is actually your best response. Beyond that, if you purchase more data, your utility is getting lower, getting lower. Although you purchase more data, your quality is higher, but the cost is even higher. So that's the, the trade-off. All right. So we compare different uh, schemes. We compare the concept with uh, uh, uniform pricing uh, scheme. Uniform pricing means what well, my data, this bit and that bit, they have the same price. But in my approach, well, this bit and that bit might have different prices. Depends on how important, how much contribution this bit brings to the to the to the video decoding, right? All right. So from here we can see by by differentiating the price uh, between different data, right? The 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 utility uh, utility can be improved uh, can be improved. All right. So both curve shows the behavior. See, uh, if you purchase too much data, of course, the utility gonna, gonna reduce due to the cost. Uh, but in general, you see concave shape of this uh, utility from a uh, uh, from user side. All right. So seems like uh, game theory uh, is very powerful and effective tool to solve economic problem in wireless network. But sometimes game theory cannot solve a problem. Even the, the example I gave you, see, I had a hard time to prove uh, for the second part, right? Is the, the curve is concave. Sometimes it's very difficult. It's not straightforward to find the natural equilibrium. Sometimes proving the curve to be concave is not obvious, right? So what happens if we cannot prove that or we, we cannot easily find a Nash equilibrium? All right, so what can we do? A lot of people see start looking for machine learning. So uh, so do I. If I cannot solve the problem, I'll uh, ask for machine learning uh, to help me, right? So still the same story, but let's change the story a little bit. Instead of forming in a game theory format, let's form it in a social utility format or machine learning format. All right, so yeah, three players, content provider, wireless carrier, and then uh, user's equipment or users, right? And still the old story, you pre Netflix or YouTube, pre prepare the content, right? Uh, ATT, Verizon, Sprint, they, they, T Mobile, they, they deliver data. And you, at end user, you consume the data. Still sa same story. But can we make this uh, simplified? Uh, simplified. Let's see these cases. See, for example, like the, the wireless carrier and the content provider, uh, they have to bear the cost uh, to provide, for example, like, like the, the source data. Uh, you would like to watch the movie using a ha virtual reality headset. Right? Uh, and uh, for the user, when you watch this uh, v VR movie, probably you want to purchase a decent amount of data, but not too much. Right? And also ensure you have a good quality of experience. So this is a uh, optimization problem instead of a, a game problem, right? So let's focus on social utility. 
we change the game uh, uh, problem formulation a little bit, right? So social utility, how can we define that? There are many approaches, right? In, in this uh, approach, in this study, we define the social utility, utility as all players' uh, uh, utility. Let's see the, the user, of course, is a QE, user's quality of multimedia, and subtract by amount of uh, financially how much uh, money the user pay, assume user pay per packet based price, and subtract by how much uh, cost the content provider like Netflix, CNN, the, the, the HBO, how, how they prepare the data, the cost, and subtract by how much uh, resource the ATT, Verizon, Sprint, uh, they prepare the, 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 the data delivery. So these are the, the, the total cost. You subtract all total cost, that's the social utility. Right. Okay, so if we can maximize the social utility, still based on our uh, old rule, we, we normalize normalize our price as a per bit, uh, per unit quality gain price as y zero. So we still have a very limited uh, parameters, very few parameters we are going to optimize. Right? So for example, hey, what is the price the base station should determine, and how much data L the user determined to purchase, right? That's still uh, two-factor optimi optimization, right? So how about using uh, reinforcement learning to solve this problem, right? Uh, I can't prove this utility function is contained. It's too hard, but if we use like Q learning, uh, which is one type of uh, uh, reinforcement learning, it's easy, it's modelless, right? Uh, it runs a different episode. I, my, my model is mature, right? So I have an agent. Uh, the agent is the user equivalent, or the user, let's see, or the system, right? Uh, give an action, uh, give action by choosing. How, what's the price? Uh, what is the uh, amount of data? Now, how much uh, error should be, uh, uh, what's the maximum error tolerable by, uh, can be tolerated by the network? What's the data, data size? Uh, so on and so forth. Give this action and see the feedback from the system. So the state and the reward will be learned and new action will be given. So iteration by iterations, right? This uh, model will be mature. All right, so that's, the model is simple, but the, the problem is how to, how to establish the connections between my parameter and this machine learning algorithm. In this case, I have five features for this uh, Q learning. Number one, I should have a, a set of the environment, which is a state, the current state. I can observe the state from the, the network the second is action. What are the actions? Action, I know the base station, how much power you, 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 you choose. What's the pa packet error rate you should provide, right? And what's the price you, you label? Uh, how much data user should, uh, should request? I know the actions, right? And uh, also the probability for the transition from one state to another state. Right? And what's a reward if you do so, if you change price from one to two, what's the outcome? What's the benefit? Uh, you have, that's a reward, uh, reward. You get feedback from the uh, environment by doing this action, by giving this actions, all right? So from here, we can see, all, all right, my state will be five factors, right? First, I observe how important this packet is, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the, the QI. I know, well, come from the base station, come from the server. Server should tell me how important each packet is. The size of packet L, Server should tell me, I should know that. And the packet error rate, the PK, the base station should, should, be the, should, should tell me, what's the per packet error rate you're providing at this service level? I know that. And uh, uh, five is the user's preference, right? Uh, in, in this case, it's not a focus for my research, but in future, well, if some users more pick here, we can provide the users. This is also a factor we can consider. And the uh, last two factors, are the factor we control, right? L, the size of data we purchase. Uh, y, Y0, which is the basic price uh, for per bit uh, data. All right, so well, we, can, we, we can run this Q learning algorithm and uh, iteration by iteration, we can, <laughs> we, we can find the solutions, right? Uh, so our life is easier <laughs> if we, as long as we model this, uh, we establish the connections between the machine learning and the parameters you would like to optimize. All right, so yeah, so we can follow this 
algorithm, uh, a skill learning algorithm uh, to, uh, to optimize or to, to, to find, uh, to approximate uh, a decent uh, number of the Y, which is the price, and L is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the size of data. Yeah. Okay, we don't see this is global optimal, but this is a, this is a pretty good solution, right? We can't prove it's, a, it's optimal, but it's not bad. All right, let's see some data. <clears throat> Uh, let's use subjective factors, right? The horizontal axis we show, well, amount of data we consume, the vertical x, y axis we, we show the QE of the user, user's experience, right? From here we can see, of course, more data you have, higher quality. But the subjective factors, which is uh, uh, here we show as a A3, uh, uh, A3, because A2 as a factor we in our research team is objective, it's network. Network is fixed. Now, if you are a pick here, about the content, let's see the Olympics game, right? You watch uh, gymnastic, I, uh, you're picky about that. So uh, for, for you, it maybe it's hard to satisfy. Uh, uh, you have a higher A3. For me, uh, I don't care, maybe uh, easily I can, get, I can be happy uh, with the same video we, we watch, right? But for swimming, maybe reverse, right? I'm very picky, but you're not. Right? So users, uh, subjective factor can also play a role here, but it's not a major focus. Uh, for us at this moment. But how about the objective factors? Network. If the network, if the, 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 the system is more sensitive to packet loss, see, your network, your ATT, lose a lot of data. Uh, your, your Verizon maybe yeah, pr pr provide pretty reliable quality. So what's the impact to the user's quality? So if your, your system is more sensitive to packet error loss or network error loss, errors or loss of data, so from here, we can see, well, see the, the, the quality gains uh, and the network sensitivity, error sensitivity is strongly correlated as well. And generally speaking, see, uh, let's see the utility, a social utility total, right? and the uh, total amount of data. We use uh, two different uh, uh, price settings, large price settings, small price setting, right? Uh, both we can see, Good, yeah, we, we found both We found both of them are, are concave, right, concave. You, once you purchase beyond a certain amount of data, when the utility reach uh, maximum, then go down because the cost is, is, is too high, right? The cost factor is uh, too significant, right? But it, it's hard for us to prove it's concave, all right? In this figure, we see, hey, at, for different price settings, uh, higher price, lower price, we see similar trend uh, for utility, social utilities. Right? Uh, and the last factor, see, uh, we see consider the re reinforcement learning approach uh, as a fixed price, fixed price. If you, you arbitrate, you tell this price is a, uh, it's a, it's a reasonable price, like you label the data uh, as you wish, or you use machine learning to label the data. So these two approaches, Blue is uh, the machine learning based approach. The red is more like the, uh, the brown is more like the, uh, the, the price. You, you just uh, arbitrarily come up with a, a magic number price. So that's, using machine learning can, can improve that, right? can improve that. De depending on whatever the setting it is. Right? So from here you can see machine learning can give you some reasonable answers uh, if you don't know how to solve that problem. All right, some uh, summary or conclusion is uh, in taking away, see uh, using economic theory, uh, to uh, to design wireless network, my concept is uh, to price a QE, not data. Data is different. This bit and that, that bit might be different. They have different roles when you decode. All right, and this could possibly potentially give a win 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 situation for three players, the content providers. You can you can have more movies sold, right? More, and for the wireless carriers like ATT Verizon, you, you might have more need or more better serve the users. Right? And for users, we, we can have more personalized or customized, a better quality. All right, and game theory can solve this problem effectively. If you can solve that, use that, it's easy. Yeah. It's, just, it's straightforward, yeah. but sometimes it's hard to find the game theory solution. Sometimes it's hard to find the natural equilibrium. Sometimes, sometimes it's hard to prove them. So machine learning is also a powerful tool in case you can't, you can't use game theory. All right, uh, what about future? In future, we might look into a number of issues. Uh, see, wireless economics and maybe psychology, we can establish some connections, interesting uh, connection between them. See, for example, if you use Li-Fi, the LED light is gonna give you data. 
If I block you, you have no data. If you are no, you have no live site, you have no data. So what about situation? Can you leverage some devices who can relay the data to you if you don't have a luxury to see the base station directly? Right. Can you give some incentive? Can we give some incentive mechanism to encourage our users like your phone, my phone, your laptop, my laptop to help to, to collectively help to, 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 to deliver data to some poor users at the edge of the network or who cannot see the base station directly? Another issue is uh, how about use a uh, uh, psychological fact like prospect theory instead of using game theory, let's use prospect theory. Yeah. The prospect theory is very different from a expect utility series. So users tend to be a more uh, a risk uh, averse or risk seeking depends on situation you're, you're, you're losing or you're, you're, you're gaining data, right? So uh, a lot of uh, articles recently have been uh, reported uh, exploring the possibility of using prospect theory to leverage uh, wireless network design. But how about this? Now I talk about multiple sets, which is uh, something I'm investigating right now. Uh, consider the situation you're taking a Uber or Lyft, carpool, right? You share this ride with some, someone else you don't know. You pay much less. Carpool is a nice idea and we're using it right now. So why not bring this idea to our wireless network? Currently our OFDMA network, LTE, new radio 5G, and even future, as long as OFDMA based, it's exclusive, which means at this time, as this frequency, it's a two dimensional resource block or rectangles we call resource block. This resource block is orthogonally allocated to some user. It cannot be reused by some other users, which means if I'm here in this block, you are, you are out. Or if you are there, I'm out. But why not have a right sharing, right? We share the same resource block. And we bear some interference, of course, right? But we have a much bigger capacities, right? much larger capacities. And if our user experience uh, is not too bad, all right? So these are issues I'm going to investigate. Hopefully next year I can report something in CSRC talk, maybe 2021. All right, uh, these are some papers I, uh, my, my student and, and we have worked together uh, in the last two years. Uh, if you are interested, you can, look into the details of this research. All right, thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments, please? Well, thank you, Professor Wan, for a very interesting uh, talk. And the floor is open for questions. Just unmute yourself. Hey, uh, we, I have a question. Okay. So in your in your formula uh, in your calculation, you seems to uh, assume you know the total uh, number of uh, um, consumers. So because you 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 do the summation i from one to, do you assume you know and then yes. the static system? Yes, uh, something I, I assume I know that. Um, so this information can be uh, collected from base station. See, uh, if you log into the uh, wireless access point, like either Wi-Fi or the base station from uh, the ATT horizons, they have this information. So the base station should know that. How many but, users currently are uh, active? Yeah, but then how long, so how, how frequent do you make changes because people go in and out, right? Yeah, right. So this situation is, uh, um, how frequently we make changes, uh, we, 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 we get this information is uh, uh, for a group of packet, right? So you, you have a 20, 30, 40, it depends on how, how, how soon you would like to update the, the optimization, update the, the, the game theory uh, calculation. So usually this uh, time frame is not that big. Um, in case if some users come uh, as a new user, that user, uh, we don't have data for that user yet. So we don't need to worry about the new user. Next time frame, we worry about that. We already have this information. If that user is already, uh, has already left the coverage, uh, I believe that's an issue for the new base station, for the next base station, the new base station uh, can take care of that user. And for the any remaining data, either we buffer uh, or or we, look, we, we discard it. Uh, so yeah, that's that problem can be, can be solved, can be solved. And what is the scale? How, how big is N? 
uh, how big is uh, n? Is uh, n is uh, the oh, m is the number of user, right? Yeah, the, the number of user. Is, uh, in, in general, it's not very big. So uh, uh, traditionally, traditionally, when the base station cover a large area, we have a lot of uh, users. But now, see, for Wi-Fi network, we have uh, see, less than 10 users, right? Uh, uh, for home setup. Uh, for small cell, small cell, like dozens, let's say dozens of users. And in future, 10 years later, probably we, we're going to use LED light as our Wi-Fi instead of Wi-Fi. So probably only one or two users, like your phone, your watch, the uh, uh, glasses, maybe, yeah, just a number of them, not too many. Okay, thank you. Wait, the, someone is asking if you can repost the papers. Oh, okay. Uh, I can repost the paper. Yes, of course. Uh, I'll post, I'll, I'll send the paper in the chat window. And uh, hold on one moment. Uh, no problem. So as long as you have a VPN or your, uh, you can access from IEEE. Yeah, this is uh, the three papers. Uh, yeah, yeah, both yeah, both of students are come from CSRC. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a question. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that uh, it was really difficult to solve your, uh, you know, your equations using uh, expected, uh, expected utility, I guess. But if you move on to prospect theory, won't that make it even more difficult? Uh, yes, it's still difficult. Uh, so pros prospect theory will. Uh, consider more psychological factor or user's perspective. See, uh, game theory is very objective. So it's, it's very cold, like a machine, right? See, you must be very rational uh, to play the game. Like, like, like the case, like firm one, firm two case. Firm two will not fight because firm two is so rational. But human are not. Human are irrational sometimes. See, see some human might, might choose to fight even I lose, but you lose more, right? So this Psychological factor might be better captured in uh, prospect theory. Would you but still for solving the problem uh, as you mentioned? Still difficult. Yeah. Uh, game theory, prospect theory, is still both difficult. Uh, if we cannot solve problem, uh, I personally, I'll, I'll seek for reinforcement learning or something else. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you expect? I thought the argument for um, basic, you you know, utility functions was that. Um, essentially, in the long run, if you play the game over and over again, that you will converge to sort of the tr classical um, solution, right? Like you learn the rules of the game, you learn to maximize your utility better. Um, wouldn't it be the case necessarily that maybe prospect theory models behavior earlier on in the inter interactions with your service provider and then later on converges to you know, what you have right now? Um, see, the prospect theory might change the game change the rule of the game, right? See, for example, the, the, if you use game theory, like the, the outcomes one versus two, uh, using prospect theory, maybe the outcome you think is two, it's not two, it's three or four. You value something different than I value that. So that is the change I see if we use prospect theory. Uh, the game, you can still use game theory to solve that, but the, your value, see, you see the same thing. You value it and I value it differently. Mm -hmm. I see, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know much about group theory, but a, a aspect of it that I'm interested in is the concept of a group fairness versus individual fairness. And I think like an example you gave in the beginning of your talk was that maybe at some point we might end up paying for the data we use. So like in that example, right, that would be fair for people who can afford that, but that's not fair for people who can afford that, right? It'll limit their resources. So I was wondering if moving, moving forward, have you thought about including any kind of fairness parameter or like regularization in your model to address that kind of issue? Very good question. See, uh, fairness is a big problem. Uh, when we, uh, in, in wireless network, there are two factors, two sides of the coin. One is efficiency, one is fa uh, fairness. And uh, the, uh, also there are communities talking about uh, network neutrality. We, the basic, the common understanding of, of our community is so we try to provide equal opportunity for everyone uh, to access network or to meet the demand. However, uh, it's hard to define the absolute fair. Some people use fairness index, which is James fairness index, which is the number between zero to one. The, the higher to one, the close to one, the better, the close to zero, the worse. Uh, but we still find problem for them, for email user and uh, virtual reality game users. Uh, so, <laughs> Some users have very high requirement uh, in terms of latency and 
the data rate, some users don't. So it's truly complex issue. Uh, I, I see this uh, this uh, community still uh, working hard, uh, studying the uh, fairness, try to accomplish the fairness in uh, the study. By the way, I also see uh, Rogers class in 10 years, Rogers has uh, a large network in his home. He has 32 users. Yeah, I see 32. Well, of course, yeah, you have more users, the complexity is, is higher. Is higher, but uh, 10 or 32, uh, still I think the problem is solvable uh, in, in terms of a while loop or for loop. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a, I know it's a hard question that is still very much up in the air. Any other questions, comments? In that case, we thank you very much, uh, Professor Wan, for a very interesting talk. And thank you, everybody, for uh, coming to the presentation. And have a nice weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.